Thank you for listening to this week's message from Go Church. We hope it encourages you today. For more information about Go Church, check us out online at letsgo.church. We hope you enjoy today's message. It is so good to see everybody this morning. Do me a favor, give each other a round of applause. Great decision coming to church today. You could be anywhere doing anything and you have decided to be here. So thank you very, very much in prioritizing God, the people of God. Becky and I have missed you guys. We've been out on family vacation for the last three weeks and I'm telling you it has been so good. So thank you for allowing us to do that. And I especially want to thank Thomas and Bill and Caroline for stepping in and doing a great job teaching. Can we give them a nice round of applause? The worship team, Rachel and Kevin, everybody stepping up to serve. I want to build today on what Bill was talking about in week two, the power of encouragement. The power of encouragement. Why? Why, why, why? It's very rare in our culture to hear things like, I am just, I'm telling you, I'm over it. I am just too encouraged. I mean, if one more person says one more nice thing to me, I am out. I'm too encouraged. I'm too positive. I'm too full of faith. I'm too full of optimism. Like, you never, never hear that. Normally, our culture, I think, leans a little bit more cynical, maybe a little bit more negative. They see the glass, you know, the proverbial glass, right? So for the pessimist, what? The glass is half, what is it? Right, the optimist is half, right. So the sales rep wants to talk to you about the benefit of ice. The opportunist will just drink the water. The physicist is like, it's totally full. Totally full of air and water. Totally full. I think we kind of lean a little pessimistic, a little negative in our culture. I mean, all you've gotta do, hit the news feed, check out things that are happening, And it seems like it's one bad negative thing after another. And sometimes it's hard. It's a challenge to stay positive, to stay optimistic, to stay full of faith when it is kind of crazy in and around our lives. And so today I want us to focus in on the power of encouragement and to realize once again that it's one of the most powerful spiritual things that we can do is to bring encouragement, to embody encouragement encouragement, to see our God through that lens. And so it brings us to the one big thing. Grab your communication card, flip it right over on the back, and write this down. Our one big thing that we want to think about today. Our God is an encouraging God. Our God is an encouraging God. The way that you see God, I think, affects everything else in your life. If you perceive God to be the opposite of this, you know, somebody who's just waiting for you to mess up, somebody who's like big guy in the sky, ready to whack you down whenever you mess up, some just big, strong, aloof being that you could never live up to so you always feel like you're less than or you can't make it. The way that you see God affects so much in your life. And I was reading a devotional over the last couple of weeks, and I love this quote. This is out of a book called The Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer. He writes this, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us and the most portentous fact about any man is not what he at a given time might say or do, but what he is deep in his heart, how he conceives God to be. When you think about God, how do you see him? Do you see God as an encouraging God? Do you see God as a loving God? Yes, he is just, but he is also loving Could it be true that God is an encouraging God and if we are going to be like God, maybe we need to find some space in our life to elevate our willingness or our ability to encourage other people and maybe sometimes even encourage ourselves. Let me ask you this. How many of you have ever had a bad day? I see a hand in the air. You had a bad day at some point in your life? It's a bad day. The last day of our vacation in Mexico was like, oh man. (laughs) Can we say like another month? It's a bad day. So I was thinking about a bad day that I had 
long, long time ago. This is like 14 years ago. This is out of my journal. I write this entry on March 12, 2008. This morning, I feel depressed. Again, have you ever just had a bad week, a bad zone, just a bad season? Maybe you've tried to do something, it's not working out. Maybe you're going for a promotion, it didn't work, or they're making you wait, 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 wait. When you're like, hello, obvious candidate, right here, best fit right here. A relationship thing, a school thing, something you don't expect. Life's going along great, you get an injury, have to have a surgery. Things happen in life. You wake up sometimes and you're like, wow, this is bad. I remember this moment. This was a tough season in ministry. So at this time, Becky and I were directing college student ministry at the University of Oklahoma. And it was a tough little season. We were going through some stuff with our students and I was struggling. So I decided in the afternoon to go on a run. Sometimes it's just good for me. Clear the brain go on a run. So I go out on the run, normal route around campus. I come back and I write this down in my journal. On my way back to the office, a girl who looked to be college aged stopped me. She smiled and said, I know this sounds weird. And actually I remember it felt kind of weird. It was like, I'm kind of running, got earbuds in, you know, and she's kind of kind of creeping up on me at the intersection. I could tell she wanted to say something, so I'll go, you know, earbud out. She's like, I know this sounds weird, kind of felt weird, but I saw you working out, and that made it even more weird. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) sorry about that. (laughs) I saw you working out, and I felt like God wanted me to stop you and tell you something. And then it got kind of interesting. I mean, she didn't know me. I don't know her. She doesn't know I'm a pastor. She doesn't know what I'm going through. She doesn't know anything about me. I'm just some random guy jogging slow around campus. So she stops me, an adult, college-age girl. And she tells me, I just feel like God wanted me to stop you and tell you today that Jesus will be your strength, that God is your strength. I told her about the last 24 hours of challenge I had to hold back tears. I told her to be encouraged because she was used by God. I happened to go and run at a specific time, go a specific way. I stopped at a certain time. She just happened to be able to see me at the right time in the right place. It is not serendipity, I write in this journal. God, thank you for encouraging me today. And then I wrote a little prayer to end it. Jesus, you see me. You intercede for me, you pray for me, you love me, and I love you. Thank you for ministering to me today. God bless her for sharing that word with me. And I'm telling you, Go Church, in the same spirit that that college girl came and stopped me, God has brought you here today. Our paths have crossed, and I believe that God wants to tell you today, you can be encouraged that he will give you strength, that Jesus will be your strength, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have great reason to hope. Your faith can grow. Your development with Jesus can grow, and he will provide for you every step of the way. Do you believe that, Go Church? We serve not just an amazing God, but an encouraging God. He sees you, And I was thinking about this two days ago in devotional time. He sees me, he sees us. And no matter where we're at, in the middle of whatever struggle, he doesn't see us and get mad, he sees us and gets generous. Full of love, he sees you and he loves you. He sees your best and he sees your worst. He sees your potential, he sees your mistakes, he sees all the good things that you do, and he loves you through all of it. Today, I want us to be challenged and to figure out a way to be more and more like him and to grow in our willingness and ability to encourage other people. Check out this scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. This is the Apostle Paul writing. When we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. Young parents, can I get a witness? No rest. (laughs) No rest, tired. We faced conflict from every direction with battles on the outside and fear on the inside. I think this is interesting. 
So many of the letters that were written in the New Testament were written to address human drama, fighting, problems, conflict, people doing crazy things. Isn't it amazing 2,000 years later? It's like all the same. <laughs> conflict, fighting, arguing, debating, people doing crazy stuff. So Paul is writing this, but look at verse six, but God, everybody say, but God. But God, God is interceding here, who encourages those who are discouraged, encouraged us by the arrival of Titus. Encouragement came through somebody else showing up. I think that is interesting. God didn't send an angel. God intervened and sent a person. And Titus showing up, it changed the way that Paul felt about his situation. Maybe something turned in his attitude, turned in his psyche. I envision him feeling discouraged, a bit depressed, and Titus showing up almost like a fresh player in the game. You know, if you've ever been out playing a game and maybe you're a starter, you play, 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 exhausted, and that break, somebody coming in, seeing somebody else get fired up, it affects how you feel, it affects how you perform. And after all, part of the mission here at Go Church is to live like Jesus. If God is loving, we should be loving. If God is encouraging, we should be the most encouraging people that our community could ever spend time with. They might not understand, they might not agree, they might not believe in God, but how would it be, no matter how they spend time with us, to walk away from that experience and feel a little more encouraged? Not beat up, not judged in the wrong way, but encouraged. If God is encouraging, we should be good at encouraging other people. Just like that girl stopped me. Just like God sent Titus, could it be that God is sending you to people that I will never meet, that Brian will never meet, that Becky will never meet, that Bill will never meet? Could it be that within God's omniscience, in all of his knowledge, in all of his plan, he has selected you to be the person that brings encouragement to that engineering firm, that team of people, that tech team, that new job, that insurance company, that team that you lead, that health group, that political group. What if of all the people in the world, God has selected you to bring his presence, to bring his dynamic, to bring his faith, to bring his spirit into a dark world? What if you're the answer to some of these questions? So when Titus shows up, Paul felt encouraged. So this leads us to kind of a tough question. How do people feel when we show up? Make it personal. How do people on your team feel when you show up? How does your spouse feel when you show up? after a long day or week or three of work? How do your kids feel when you show up? Do people get nervous? Oh, I wonder what's gonna happen. I wonder if dad's in a good mood. I wonder if it went good or bad today at work. We're about to find out. Moms, how do your kids feel when you show up? Do they feel encouraged, optimistic, something good's about to happen? Or they're like, I better be good right now because I'm about to get yelled at. Is there about to be a fight? The teams that you lead at work, how do people feel as a leader when you show up? Maybe you don't know, but think about it. Do they feel apprehensive? Do they feel like, okay, I better say the right thing. Are they going to jump on me one more? I just, I'm just going to be quiet. I'm not going to say anything. Like, just get through it. How do people feel when you show up? What if... God began to do something in your heart, in your life, where over time, when people start to see you coming in, when they know you're going to show up, it is like the anticipation of something good is about to happen. 
I bet there's going to be an encouraging story. I know they're going to say something nice. If they do bring some kind of instruction or correction, it's always because I know that they believe in me. I know that they love me. They know that they have my best interests in mind. Think about how people feel when you show up. Because you don't just represent yourself. Ultimately, you represent your Father, your Creator. And Jesus says this, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, by your love for one another. So how can we do this? How can we bring some encouragement? Two big actions. Write this down. This is the first one. Encourage others daily. Everybody say daily. Daily. Encourage others daily because discouragement never takes a day off. We don't have to look very far to see a negative social post. Somebody griping, somebody complaining, comments going crazy. I don't know why it is, but it just seems like we're wired. It's so much easier to complain about stuff than it is to find positive in things. It's just so easy to do. It's like somebody can say something nice to us, and we forget that. But we always remember the things that sting, right? We always remember the negative things, but it seems like the positive things were so quick to forget. I don't know why that is with us, but discouragement never takes a day off. Never. I think this is one important thing. Encouraging other people daily. Becoming consistent. Working in encouraging thoughts, beliefs, language into everyday conversations where it's not weird. It's not awkward because it's true. You know, if you really start to pray about this, if you really start to ask God, God, help me to see people the way that you see people, not the way my natural eyeballs want to see them and get annoyed. That person who just cut you off and you want to wave to them with the one-fingered salute, but you decide not to. The things that make you mad, make you frustrated. Maybe that person cut you off, just got out of one of the worst doctor's appointments they've ever had in their life. It's not just somebody who cut you off, it's somebody who just got devastating news. We just never know. We don't know what's happening in the other person. We assume so many times. What if naturally we begin to see people the way that Jesus sees people, and we begin to pray for people that we're going to meet throughout the day? I will do this. I will pray. I pray this a lot. God, help me to be prepared for the conversations I know I need to have and help me be prepared for the conversations that I don't even know I'm going to have. And I'm praying that your will be done in advance in all of it. So whenever I meet somebody, see somebody, have a conversation, have a text message exchange, do an email, that stuff is already covered in prayer. I'm already asking God, help me to be an encourager and to see how you see the other person, not just how my culture sees it, not just how my natural eyeballs see it. Check this out. This is Hebrews chapter 3. This is Paul, again, writing, discouragement never takes a day off, neither does God. Look at verse 13. But encourage one another daily. Everyone say daily. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. I think that's interesting. That somehow there's a connection between developing yourself as a God follower in such a way that you can naturally encourage other people, and as you do, it somehow, somehow insulates you from certain kinds of temptations or maybe certain kinds of negativity. There's something that God's doing in your heart, encouraging each other daily. Now, sometimes this is verbal and on purpose and planned. Sometimes it's just random, you know, just a random act of kindness. God shows you an opportunity, you take it. Have you ever talked yourself out of an opportunity? Like you go into a space or something's happening and you had a thought, like, I should go talk to that person or go say hi or go do something, and you talk yourself out of it? Like, oh, well, what what if it's not? It's probably the devil. It's probably, he doesn't want me to talk... (laughs) What if I mess it up? What if I say the wrong thing? That's probably not God. You talk yourself out of it. Trust me, the devil will never want you to go and share the love of God with anyone, okay? So you can cancel that one out. Sometimes it can be planned. Sometimes it can be big. Sometimes it can be small. I've got little text messages on my phone 
that I've sent and received just little moments of encouragement. You know, I'll send little text messages and follow up with people. I got a text message. This is back from when it was cold. I wanted to share with you today just as an example of encouragement. This is from Sarah. She texted me this, and she writes, I meant to reach out sooner, but I seem to have misplaced your business card. Now, the business card she's talking about are our Go Church invite cards, which are conveniently located on the swag table right out here. Always keep some in my wallet, especially designed to fit in any purse, any wallet, in any time. That way, if you ever have an opportunity, you can just share the love of God in a practical way. Just think about it. I seem to have misplaced your business card in my bottomless mom purse. I like that one. It's so true. Like moms has pharmacies in their purse. I have everything. I wanted to reach out and again express my thanks for your simple act of kindness, helping to carry the bagels and coffee to my car during the blizzard. I am so thankful that we have kind souls in our neighborhood. I thought a lot about it since that morning, and through that act, I saw Jesus in our neighborhood. I smile thinking that I could have actually been anyone, and you would have still offered to help, and that whoever it may have been would have experienced the love of Christ that morning. It seems so simple, and maybe you carry bagels for most people most mornings, but it has resonated with me since that morning. So thank you again for doing more than just offering to lend a hand. Thank you for reminding me that Jesus' love is real, and he is present among us. I'm not reading this so you can say, oh, look, I'm reading this because it really happened. It wasn't anything planned. It wasn't anything super theological. It wasn't anything really even hard. I just saw this woman. I don't know her. She didn't know me. We were in Einstein's Bagels. We'd finish up a men's Bible study, and she was trying to carry out all this stuff. I just volunteered to help. Hey, can I help you run this out to the car? Sure. And then this happened. Here's the deal. I can't hardly think of very many things that feel like this feels. To be used in any small or big way where something that you do makes somebody think about God or makes somebody think about Jesus or makes somebody think about. She'd been thinking about this. I mean, I received this like weeks after this even happened. I'd almost forgotten about it. She'd been thinking about this. God can use bagels. God can use an invite. Encouragement can come in many ways, but one thing encouragement never is, is silent or apathetic. It takes a leader to encourage other people. It takes somebody who's willing to put themselves out there a little bit, to share encouragement. Because sometimes you might be afraid you'll be taken the wrong way or maybe it looks like you're trying to suck up to somebody. And I'm telling you, if you'll begin to pray about it, God will begin to do some things in your heart and you will just start to naturally see more and more value in other people. People who disagree with you on political things. People that disagree with you on economic policy. People that disagree with you about sexual things. they got opinions about this and opinions about that. But as you begin to pray and begin to see people and ask God to do this, you will find that you will begin to love and have a hard time getting mad at people as often as you used to. It's hard to pray for somebody and be mad at them at the same time. It can come in many ways. Let's encourage each other daily. Everybody say daily. Second thing, write this down. Encourage yourself in the Lord. The first one, encourage other people. Second one, encourage yourself. Sometimes in life, if you're waiting for the college-aged girl to stop and encourage you on the side of the road that God can be your strength, if you're holding your breath for that, if you're like, I'm holding my breath, somebody needs to call me, text me, I need to go to church, somebody stop me, talk to me, pray for me, to feel encouragement, if you're holding your breath for that, you might suffocate and die. Sometimes as a leader, you just have to stand strong and say, you know what? I'm not going to delegate away the responsibility I have for my own free will, for the decisions that I make, for leading my life, for making decisions for me. I can't delegate that away to Pastor Nick or to some other member in church or to a spouse or a kid or work. Nobody's making me do anything. I'm choosing. I'm deciding. And sometimes in life, you just have to decide to encourage 
yourself in God. Not to be spiritually codependent on other people, but to be able to stand strong and to look back at some of the things that God has done in your life and encourage yourself. King David did this. David was in a war that was not going well, a battle that they lost. He was leading a great number of men. They were out fighting. They got defeated. They came back to regroup only to find that all of the wives of the fighting men and children have been taken. They'd done a sneaky thing. While they were fighting, 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 they sent in a force from behind, kidnapped everyone. So of course, David's soldiers are upset, mad. They've turned on David. They want to kill him. They're so upset. Literally, the Bible says that they wanted to stone David. Okay? This has nothing to do with marijuana. I'm talking about literal stones thrown at David's face until David dies. Okay? They want to kill David. Look what David does. 1 Samuel chapter 30. This is how David responds in the middle of all of this. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Now, the way that my mind works, I envision David kind of escaping, maybe getting away from these guys who want to kill him, and maybe going on a walk, maybe hiding in a cave, maybe trying to take a break. And I imagine David doing a little reflection and maybe trying to pump himself up a little bit. Like if you've ever tried to pump yourself up for a performance or a game, trying to get ready for something that's hard, I imagine David giving himself a little pep talk. Like it's bad right now, but David going back and remembering. Like God, I remember when I was guarding my dad's sheep and a bear attacked, you helped me to defend, kill that bear, defend the sheep. I remember when I was taking care of my dad's sheep, this lion comes, which by the way, guarding sheep sounds dangerous. <laughs> it's like bear and lion. You help me kill this lion. I imagine David thinking all the way back, I remember you helped me defeat Goliath, big, tall, stanky, no deodorant wearing, giant, hated God, hated the people of God. You brought him down. I cut off his head. I imagine David looking back into his past, finding some encouragement for his present, and it working to help move him forward into the future. And sometimes we have to do the same thing. When you're sick, when people are talking about you in a negative way, when things are not going your way, sometimes you've got to stand up and say, you know what? I'm going to look back. God has been faithful. God has forgiven my sin. There have been times when God has healed me, restored me. I can look back, see his faithfulness. You can start to allow that to affect your current mood and condition. Allow that past truth to come over and infect you right here in the present. Say, you know what? God is still a healer. God is still strong. God can still do it. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be afraid of sickness. My God has never changed. He is always the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he will be good for my tomorrow. Do you believe that, Go Church? You've got to encourage yourself and never delegate away your responsibility for the free will decisions that you and only you can make. Nobody's making you do anything. God doesn't even do that. The power of choice is an amazing thing. I have found, and this is a hard truth, especially for a pastor or a public communicator, I have found that over the years, the people that I've served or been around, they don't remember the things that I say. It really kind of stinks as a pastor. <laughs> because I expect all of you to remember every single word, every single message. <laughs> but it's true, like if you've ever led teams, if you've ever been around the same people for quite some time, it's kind of true they don't really remember many times the exact things that you say. But they remember how you made them feel. They remember how they felt around you. But sometimes you do have a convergence of both, and those are fun moments. I got a text message a couple of weeks ago from Allie Buris. Jonathan and Allie Buris are missionaries. We support them through Go Church. And this text message she sent me 
This is from July 15th. She sends me this picture, and she says, this is one of the photo booth signs we made for Alumni Day tomorrow. So Becky and I used to be Allie's pastor when we were doing college student ministry at LSU. And she writes this little acronym down. Now, y'all don't know what this means, probably. She's bringing this all the way. I mean, this is like, you know, 18 years ago or something. So she was there at a particular time when I would tell students a lot that I loved and believed in them. I love and believe in you. I would try to show it. When they were skeptical, like, I don't know if I can lead a Bible study. I don't know. I don't know if I feel ready. We would train them. I would say, look, you can do this. I believe in you. You can do it. I remember Lisa King. She was nervous about starting a Bible study in her sorority house. I said, Lisa, look, Becky and I love and believe in you. You can do this. And she did it. She did it for a year and a half. That thing was packed. Had sisters come to Christ. We did outreach events with other homes, other houses. It was great. But anyway, somehow over the years, the students kind of switched this into an acronym, and they would tell me, Illaby. They didn't want to say the whole thing. <laughs> so they would do this. So take your communication card, look at it right at the bottom. Right underneath all the stuff where you've been taking notes today, just all these profuse notes that you've been taking. At the very bottom, what's it say? I love and believe in you. I've been telling you the same thing ever since Go Church started in 2016. I love and believe in you. I love and believe in you. When you're like, I don't know if I can start this small group. I love and believe in you. You can do it. I don't know if I can do this thing in the band. I don't know if I can lead this team. I don't know if I can. I love and believe in you. Let's do it. Let's train. Let's do it. I believe in your ability to be used by God. Let's do it. Sometimes it comes together. These students and you, it's not realistic to think you're going to remember all the things that you've heard or all the messages that you've heard over the years, but you will remember how you feel. And I want Go Church to be a place where you feel believed in. You feel like you are in the middle of a group of people that are cheering you on, rooting for you, praying for you, being willing to sacrifice for you. That's how I want Go Church to feel. Not a place where you will know everyone, but a place where you will always know someone through small groups, through experiences like this. Let me tell you, when we come together as a team, I feel encouraged. We don't even have to talk, and I feel encouraged. To see your face here, it encourages me. To hear you worship here encourages me. To see you talk to each other encourages me. When you come here, when we assemble together, something powerful happens. The presence of God mixes with our presence and amazing things happen on the inside that then leaks to the outside when we're here together. And that's why when I say, I'm so excited to see you, it's true. And I tell you today, I do, Becky and I both do, love and believe in you. And maybe it's 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you're living in another city, you're doing something else. You can remember the time that God had you here. And think, you know what, that group of people, I felt like I could do anything on that team. They just believed in me, helped me, they were for me. I didn't feel smaller, I felt bigger there. I want us to be like that. Let's pray. God, we look to you right now as our Father. You are an encouraging God. You are an encouraging Father. And I pray for every single person in this room, and I pray for every single person watching this online. God, I pray that right now through the power of your Holy Spirit that you would just send a wave of encouragement to wash over them. God, to wash away some anxiety that's been sticking to them, maybe stuck on them like Velcro, that you would come and begin to peel that off. Little things on the inside, maybe bad church experiences in the past where people felt smaller. God, I pray that you would begin to dissolve that feeling and replace it with encouragement and a belief, not just in you, but a belief that we can be used by you, that we all bring unique strengths to this team that without us together we are missing out that we're not meant to do life alone God the power of encouragement help us encourage 
other people daily. When we show up, God, I pray that you would show up. When the professionals in this room show up to work, that you would show up in and through that work, that we would be the best leaders, the most selfless leaders, the most willing to lay it down, the most willing to lead by example, to sacrifice for our teams, those that we're responsible for, that our kids, God, would see us in our home living for you. Before we look any certain way out in public, help us, God. I believe that God is here today and wants to bring encouragement to discouraging times. If you're here today and you have been going through a difficult season, you can resonate with that journal entry that I shared with you. I am feeling discouraged today. Today, I just feel a little depressed. And you believe that God wants to do something in your heart, but you're going through a tough time. Can I see a hand in the air? I just want to know where you're at. I want to be praying for you. Yeah, I see you. I see you, I see you, I see you. Most importantly, God sees you. And he wants to do something in your heart today. Don't leave the same way that you came. Jesus loves you so much that he gave his life. He gave his life for you. He paid the bill that we could never pay so that we could have a relationship with a holy God. And the Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth that he is Lord, believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And I want to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer of faith today. If you're ready, pray this with me out loud. Say, Jesus, thank you for speaking to my heart. I ask that you would forgive me of every sin. I'm making you the Lord and the leader of my life. And I'm going to live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for listening to this week's message. To stay in the know with Go Church, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at letsgo.church. You can also download our app from the App Store by searching Go Church. Have a great week and God bless.